starting now at 6. It is controversial, but we live in a real world, and we need to have all of our rights protected. One signature by Governor Nathan Deals all was needed for the gun debate to spark back up. After weeks of debate in the state legislature, the Safe Carry Protection Act is now Georgia law. The new law giving Georgia some of the broadest gun rights in the entire country. The Safe Carry Protection Act will allow licensed gun owners to carry firearms in bars, churches and some government buildings with relaxed security measures. Now when it comes to churches, religious leaders can decide whether churchgoers can carry guns in places of worship. Also, school districts can decide whether to allow some school employees to carry guns under certain conditions. Now opponents are calling the law the Guns Everywhere bill because of its broad scope, but some supporters say the law isn't broad enough after the final bill left out a provision that would have allowed guns on college campuses. Governor Deal answering critics saying that the Safe Carry Protection Act will help keep law-abiding Georgians safe. House Bill 60 will protect law-abiding citizens by expanding the number of places that they can carry their guns without penalty. At the same time, this bill respects the rights of private property owners who still set the rules for their lands and their buildings. The law also allows all Georgians serving in the military to get a private firearms license at the age of 18 as opposed to 21 under previous laws. We want to know what do you think? Is the Safe Care Protection Act going to make Georgians safer? Should Florida and other states follow Georgia's lead? Weigh in right now. Tell us what you think. Facebook and Twitter. Just search WTXL. A Wakulla County Elementary School students facing the possibility of being kicked out of school after bringing nearly a foot-long knife to school. The boy's father telling us his son is a victim of bullying. Wakulla County deputies tell us 12-year-old boy hit an 11 and a half inch knife blade in a school bag. The father of the Shadeville Elementary School student says he wanted to scare another student who was bullying him and his friends. The father says he's not contesting his son's punishment. He says he deserves that, but says he is upset because he believes the school district isn't doing anything to address the bullying issue. I don't know what we need. Uh, when I went to school, we didn't have fences around our schoolyards, but now we've got some schools that have metal detectors. Something's got to be done, and if the schools keep it hidden from the public, it does not fix the problem. Students who saw the knife reported the boy to the school resource officer and he was immediately suspended for 10 days. The boy will also be expelled for the rest of the year. School District Superintendent Robert Pierce says they do have programs in place to stop bullying, but they can't comment on this particular case because it is an ongoing investigation. 605, there will be an indefinite delay in the retrial for a Jacksonville man accused of killing a teen over loud music. The retrial for Michael Dunn was set to begin next month, but Dunn's new attorney asking for more time to prepare. Dunn was convicted in February of three counts of attempted second degree murder for shooting at an SUV with four teens inside. A mistrial was declared on the murder charge against him in the death of one of those teens, Jordan Davis. Prosecutors hope to get a murder conviction the second go around. Dunn claims he fired in self-defense. Florida inmate Robert Hendricks is dead this morning after he was executed last night at Florida State Prison. Hendricks did not make a statement before being put to death by lethal injection. He received the death sentence for the brutal murder of his cousin and his cousin's wife in 1990. Hendricks killed Elmer Scott to keep him from testifying against him in a burglary case. A fight on a school bus in Orlando ending with an 11 year old stabbing a classmate. Police say an 11 year old sixth grader at Chain of Lakes Middle School got into an argument with a 15 year old eighth grader. The two apparently arguing over his cell phone when the older boy hit the younger boy twice in the head. Police say the younger boy then pulled a pair of scissors from his pocket and stabbed the older boy in the chest. The 15-year-old was hospitalized in stable condition. Deputies took the 11-year-old into custody, charging him with the aggravated battery with a weapon. A Boynton Beach woman accused of animal abuse after her dog is found in some pretty nasty conditions, including having his mouth duct taped. Officers were called out to Andrea Carell's home two weeks ago. They say that's where they found her dog, who you see here, with duct tape wrapped around his mouth, sitting in a small cage in his own filth, Police say she told them she meant to clean the dog's cage that day, but she was running late. 
She says she taped the dog's mouth shut, fearing managers at her apartment complex would hear it barking. She's been arrested, charged with animal cruelty. Her bond is set at $3,000. When a Florida soldier was called into action, he thought his home was in good hands. But now he says squatters have moved in and they appear to have more power than he does. Shannon Binkin now tracking down the unwanted house guests. Excuse me, sir. Hi, can we talk to you for a second? When we first found this guy living in a soldier's house without permission, he wasn't happy to see us, threatened us even. Do you have a lease? Uh, there is no lease. There was a contract. Julio Ortiz describes this contract as a verbal agreement with a friend of the soldier to fix up this Newport Ritchie home in exchange for living here rent free. The friend tells us not true. Ortiz just moved in months after their work was done. Ortiz eventually invited us inside to show off that work. As you can see, look, they didn't have no cabinets. I put cabinets, I put stoves, I put everything in this house. I want the people out. They're criminals living in my house. Specialist Michael Sharkey owns the house. Right now, he's stationed in Hawaii. Last year, it was Afghanistan. His house was supposed to be empty. But Sharkey says Ortiz and his girlfriend Fatima moved in and changed the locks. I have never spoke to these people in my life. From Afghanistan, he called the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. His wife flew in from Hawaii on New Year's Eve. She called deputies to help take back their house. But they told her it's a civil matter and they can't make the squatters leave without a formal eviction signed by a judge. Furious, Sharkey reached out to aid on your side. Because basically what you're telling me is just because they're in the house and they took up residence, they can live there. Okay, so I can go down the street and find an empty house and just kick in the door and start living there, and that's my residence. Uh, I don't think that would work. And what about fixing up the house? Sharkey says that's a lie, too. Ortiz was supposed to help his friend, not move in. Uh, she supplied the kitchen cabinets, the countertops, everything that was in the kitchen, all the paint, all the supplies and everything to redo the house and get it livable for somebody to rent it. And these people took advantage of it and just decided to move in. They're using buckets for water. Without a lease, Ortiz can't get the water company to turn it on. And with the law on his side, he says he'll move out when he's good and ready. I don't want no problems. I'm like, you can see my jacket. I'm 42 years old. I don't got nothing now, not a ticket. And apparently that's not exactly true either. WFLA did some digging into his background and found lengthy criminal records. TV station also reporting Ortiz spent a combined 12 years in prison in New Jersey for robbery, carjacking, and selling drugs on school property. Both he and his girlfriend have reportedly been arrested multiple times. Well, coming up later tonight, the next installment of the WTXL Question Center. Joining us tonight, members of Children's Home Society of North Florida. They're going to be here to talk about the need for foster parents and how you can become one. They're also going to talk about adoption and the need for children looking for good homes. Question Center taking place tonight live during our evening newscast, 5 until 6.30 p.m. You'll see the phone number on your screen at that point of the phone number. You can call in and ask your questions. We've got all the details on our website, WTXL. TXL TV 611 coming up marijuana users listen up a new study now showing that smoking weed may not be as beneficial as some want you to believe plus it's official Bradley Manning's name change has finally been approved we'll tell you more coming up What does it take to be a fixer? Join Jade Valexa tonight at 11 as she examines the world of being Olivia Pope. Watch Scandalous Profile of a Fixer tonight at 11, only on WTXL ABC 27, dedicated to you. Good Morning America plus Spider-Man. Amazing! The cast of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 swings in and takes over Times Square. Can you handle it? Then. The mega deals and steals event of the season. On ABC's Good Morning America this morning. When I was growing up, my family had it hard. My mom worked two jobs to make ends meet. She fought for me and she never quit. After a tour of duty in the Navy, I went to college on the GI Bill, then started a business. You know, everyone deserves the dignity and the opportunity that comes with a good job. That's what I work on every day, and we've added more than half a million new Florida jobs so far. I'm Rick Scott. Let's keep working. 
sponsored by Let's Get to Work. Unclaimed freight notice this week at American Freight. Over 1,000 truckloads of living room furniture. Seven piece living room groups that include a sofa, love seat, coffee table, two end tables, and two designer lamps. You get all seven pieces from only $398 complete. Free layaway, same day delivery. Come to the Looney Docks this weekend only at American Freight in Tallahassee, 3170 West Tharp. Phone 504 1000. That's 504 1000. This Memorial Day weekend, come to the Lloyd Pavilion for the Lloyd Florida Music Festival. Bring your tents, lawn chairs, small coolers, and relax and listen to Roy C., Nelly, Tiger Travis, Class Band, Lacey, Donnell Davis, and the Maximum Treble Band. Hosted by DeWolf from the Southern Soul Network and the R&B Blues Review. Gates open at 1.30. For tickets, call this phone number or visit these locations. The Lloyd Florida Music Festival on Memorial Day weekend, Saturday, May 24th. Michelle Obama visiting Fort Campbell, Kentucky Wednesday talk about a new website that will help military members find jobs. The First Lady says it's designed to help veterans transition from the battlefield to civilian life. Michelle Obama and Jill Biden working together to help put hundreds of thousands of veterans back to work. There's increased security at the National Civil Rights Museum in Tennessee after a man broke in and decided to take a nap. Memphis police arresting the 33-year-old man Wednesday. They say he threw a rock through a window at the former Lorraine Motel. Officers say they found him asleep in room 308. That's just a few doors down from the room where Martin Luther King Jr. was staying the day he was assassinated in 1968. Police say it appears nothing was taken from the museum. Bradley Manning, the former Army private convicted in the largest leak of classified material in U.S. history, is now officially known as Chelsea Elizabeth Manning. A Kansas judge granted the name change request on Wednesday. Manning is serving a 35-year prison sentence for leaking more than 700,000 pages of classified military documents to the anti-secrecy website WikiLeaks. Well, if you're looking to splurge on travel this year, you're not alone. A new survey from the travel website TripAdvisor shows people around the world are planning to spend more on travel expecting to spend on average a little more than six thousand dollars this year Australians plan to spend the most double the average at about twelve thousand dollars a year must be a good time of year to be an Aussie survey found people weren't necessarily more confident in the economy they just didn't want to scale back on their vacations. When the news of sunrise returns, talking this year's March of Dimes and how you can help with the research of premature babies. And could early marijuana use cause heart problems? A new study now finding a link between the two. If you're preparing for international travel, you need more than just a passport. Wherever you may travel, wherever you may roam, TripRx is your ticket to a healthy trip from home. Travel without fear of illness with TripRx. TripRx is the only comprehensive travel medicine service of its kind in the Big Bend. We review your travel itinerary, provide vaccinations, infectious disease information, preventative medications, and measures, all by destination. Whether business or pleasure, get your ticket to healthy travel with TPCA's TripRx. Tire Kingdom Express is now speedier than ever. Tire Kingdom Express and Speedy Oil Change have joined forces to bring you quality care and fast service. Now get Speedy's fast full service oil changes and Tire Kingdom's ready to roll all inclusive tire prices and complete auto care. Plus, right now, buy three, get one free instantly on select in stock tires. Big brands like Goodyear, Yokohama, and more. Buy three, get one free instantly. Tire Kingdom Express and Speedy Oil Change. Quality care, fast service. That's all you need. This is a Morgan & Morgan medical alert. The FDA has issued its most serious recall on two chemicals, granuflow and Naturalite, used in kidney dialysis. As a result of errors using these chemicals, dialysis patients are suffering preventable cardiac emergencies. If you or a loved one suffered a heart attack or death while on dialysis, 
or shortly after, call us at 1-800-MORGAN-LAW or visit us at ForThePeople.com. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. Titan Doppler Radar is sponsored by Kraft Nissan. Now this morning, since 1970, the March of Dimes has raised more than $2.3 billion for research of premature babies and illnesses that can affect young children. Alan Cassie and Lanisha Weatherington from the Big Ben March of Dimes here talking about this year's March for Babies. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. This is the event I'm proud to take uh, part in the past couple of years. I'll be out there again this Saturday helping to emcee the event. A very important cause here. Tell me about some of the local impact. A lot of very emotional stories we hear every year. We do, and as I'm the director and a mission mom, which means that I have two children that were born premature, you know, our goal really is to make an impact locally. Um, we have several different things going on. Um, locally, we um, have community grants for TMH for the SIDS research, um, as well as we help fund Capital Healthy Start um, with a 39 weeks campaign to ensure that doctors are waiting for 39 weeks to do um, to induce labor or to have um, deliveries unless it's medically necessary. And talking about these babies, they are coming into the world again premature. They are coming into this world fighting, and it's amazing. I've got a friend who, you know, personally, I mean, her baby was born eight ounces, and if you think that's smaller than a can of Coke, mm -hmm. and these babies are coming into this world fighting, and and to see the support there, how important is that? It's huge. I mean, for society, we have one in nine babies is born prematurely every year nationally. And actually, Leon County, unfortunately, has a lower birth rate with one in eight that are born prematurely. And nationally, that costs $12 billion a year in additional medical mm -hmm. costs and the emotional burden it has on all these families. So it's a, it's a huge cost for us to support. Well, this weekend coming up again, it's about bringing the community together. Leon, Gatson, Wakulla, Jefferson, you got so many people here in the Big Bend. And again, showing your support in a very spirited way yeah. as well. Tell me a little bit about that, because I mean, I've last year people in glitter head to toe, literally. Yeah. Yes, we're excited. Um, we've added a couple of different things this year as well, just to make it even more um, celebratory. We have, we have all kinds of characters from Elsa doing balloon animals to um, several of our local schools mascots. We have. Um, live music from Ransomed. We obviously have Capital Regional Medical as our platinum sponsor. We have all kinds of wonderful things going on. We've got food and fun, and we've got a one mile and a three mile. So if you don't want to do the three mile, we've got a one mile for you. And it's going to be great weather out there. The information here on your screen, of course, we'll have it all up on our website for you too, Sunrise section of our website, WTXL.TV. So even if you're not personally impacted, it's going to be great weather. Come out and enjoy the walk. Alan and Lanisha, thank you very thank much. You. Talking thank March so of Don. Yeah. March for Babies. Thank you very much. And again, Michelle, you're promising fantastic walking weather this weekend. That's right. I, I even took a little bit of that slight rain chance on Saturday and I bumped it out because high pressure will be building and we'll have mostly sunny skies, although a little bit on the hot side there. Temperatures will be in the upper 80s, so I don't know. Work it up a sweat definitely if you're out there and you're running. For this morning, though, a mild start to the day. No rain in the forecast. Heading out towards I-10 westbound, you could run into a little bit of some patchy fog, so give yourself a few extra minutes. Visibility could be a little bit on the low side. We're seeing the lower 60s there across most of South Georgia, but Bainbridge kicking it up this morning. 66 Six degrees and 63 there in Tallahassee as well as Apalachicola. Live Oak, you're a little bit warmer as well. 65 for you and 61 there in Perry. A few spots to look out for towards the central plains. Some areas there of concern for some severe weather today. That cold front not making it towards our region here until Friday. What we're working with right now, a little bit of a sea breeze kicking up there in the afternoon hours. So that's why you see some of those pop up showers there towards the Suwannee River Valley and also towards South Georgia. Other than that, they will be moving out fairly quickly and drying up as we head towards the evening hours. And here comes this front on Friday. There it is, a little bit of a passing shower there in the evening hours for your commute home. Dries up quickly as well. Here's Saturday, high pressure building in there. A little bit of a nice light breeze and temperatures still warm in the 80s there. So gorgeous conditions. Forecast and focus showing you that as you head throughout the afternoon hours, that's when we get the chance to see those light and scattered showers all popping, popping up. No heavy downpours to really worry about. Then the clouds start to build back in and we start off with another comfortable day tomorrow. This afternoon, 85 degrees. That pop-up shower possible. Feeling a little hot and muggy and humid out there. Winds coming out of the south around 8 miles per hour and tonight's forecast dropping it back down to the 60s. Not a bad beach and boating day either. UV index is on the high side so wear the sunscreen if you are out there and I'll leave you with a look here at the seven day forecast showing you the heat up for the weekend. Then more rain chances come next week on Monday and also on Tuesday. Let's go ahead and get a check on traffic right now with 103.1 The Wolf's Big Moose. Good morning Moose. 
Good morning, Michelle, and good morning, everyone. The story of the roadways remains the same. Still no accidents in or around Tallahassee. Looking at flooding at Goose Pasture Tram and County Road 681 in Perry. You will need to avoid that area as Florida Highway Patrol has shut down those roadways. Bradford Road, Gum Road, Lafayette Street, McClay Boulevard, all still closed with detours in place for construction so you can get around without too many problems. We'll keep watching the roadways and get to your next update right around 630. Time now for your career source capital region hot job of the day. This morning's job is an escrow manager. It could either be a full or part time job with the pay between $32,000 and $35,000. The position requires you've got a high school diploma and four to six years of work related experience. If you'd like to learn more or the quick link to apply, we've got it posted for you right now on the sunrise section of our website, WTXL.TV. Our customers mean everything to us. That's why if it's important to you, then it's important to us. How about a lower utility bill? Well, our Live Oak homes come with R30 insulation and low-E thermal windows, which saves you thousands over the life of your Live Oak home. Our Live Oak homes are built with two by six walls and the strongest ridge beam in the industry. That's why we will sell this 2880 for only 599. Only at Wayne Fire, Live Oak. Time to buy a Honda Accord? We don't call it the spring into a Honda sales event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety pick. There's a bear behind you. Way to stay on your toes, Roberts. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the spring into a Honda sales event. Now, at your Honda dealer. When cable companies advertise their security system, they love to show the camera or thermostat control. What about the security system? Is it really that bad? At SafeTouch, all cameras and home automation are integrated into one powerful system. SafeTouch systems are always on, and customers can see and control anything they want from any cellular or internet device. That's what I call peace of mind. If you want a great TV picture, call satellite. But if you want a great security system, call SafeTouch Security. SafeTouch. Save a bundle by avoiding a bundle. Once in a while, everything falls into perfect harmony, and you find yourself in exactly the right place at the right time. Just be sure you're in the right car when it happens. The 2014 C-Class Sports Sedan. Power, performance, and style in total alignment. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for exceptional offers through Mercedes-Benz Financial Services. Talking your health now this morning, there's exciting news for the estimated 12% of Americans who suffer from migraines. New treatments are being tested that may help prevent these often debilitating headaches. Holly Furfer explains more in this morning's Health Minute. Two new drugs to prevent migraines show some promise, according to researchers at this year's annual meeting of the American Academy of Neurology. What has researchers excited is that instead of stopping a migraine once it's already started, these drugs may prevent the migraine from occurring. Scientists say the drugs work by blocking a protein that is known to trigger migraines. One drug is given as a shot, the other intravenously. 380 people were enrolled in the two trials. In each trial, half got one of the new medicines and half got a placebo. Most patients suffered migraines between 4 to 14 days a month. After taking the drugs, they had four additional migraine-free days a month with one drug and nearly six extra days with the other. Those taking placebo, however, also saw a decline in days with migraines, but the numbers were not as dramatic. The next step is to test these drugs with larger groups of patients. If the medicines continue to work safely and effectively, they could become available for clinical use several years down the road. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. Well, young people who smoke weed may be putting themselves at risk for heart disease. That's the findings of a new study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. Researchers say from 2006 to 2010, they found that 35 reports of patients who experience heart complications after using marijuana. They also found that all but one of these patients were under the age of 50. Now, the chief of cardiology at Georgetown University says these findings don't show the level of risk, but do indicate a link between weed and heart disease. On the way with the recent bear attacks, lawmakers could decide soon that bear hunting is back on. Plus,
The FDA proposes new regulations for e-cigarettes. I'm Timon Bradley, and I'll tell you about them coming up. At Fulmer's, we provide people with same-day cash and great deals, too. We loan or purchase items of value. To learn more, visit our website, Fulmer's.com. You'll find information about our loan and purchase programs. And some of our special deals as well. Fulmer's. More than you might expect. The 2014 Nissan Altima. With 270 horses. Blind spot warning and advanced drive assist. Choose the 38 MPG Nissan Altima and save up to 1500. Nothing beats an Altima except another Altima. Innovation that excites. Shop choosenissan.com. Are you searching for the perfect vehicle? Then we have the right selection for you. Come to Roundtree Moore Auto Group and work with one sales professional and still choose from eight different franchises, all located within three miles of each other. Largest inventory in North Florida. Choose from more than 800 new and pre-owned vehicles today. Only at Roundtree Moore in Lake City, Florida. A short drive from you. Family owned and operated since 1925. This Memorial Day weekend, come to the Lloyd Pavilion for the Lloyd Florida Music Festival. Bring your tents, lawn chairs, small coolers, and relax and listen to Roy C., Nelly, Tiger Travis, Class Band, Lacey, Donnell Davis, and the Maximum Treble Band. Hosted by DeWolf from the Southern Soul Network and the R&B Blues Review. Gates open at 1.30. For tickets, call this phone number or visit these locations. The Lloyd Florida Music Festival on Memorial Day weekend, Saturday, May 24th. of milk, all the deliciousness of Hershey's syrup. Squeeze, stir, share. Live from the WTXL studios, this is ABC 27 Sunrise. Top of the 630 here, there's a recall that could pose a risk to you or your baby. This is a picture of the Summer Infant Video Monitor. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says 800,000 of these devices are under a recall. The rechargeable battery on the handheld monitor can overheat and rupture, posing a burn hazard. The recall applies to more than a dozen models made by Summer Infant. There's been 22 reports so far of overheated and ruptured batteries, including smoke and minor property damage. Units under recall were sold between 2010 and 2012. It's 6.30 here on this Thursday morning. Good morning to you. I know everybody counting down to the weekend. It's almost here. And the fantastic news here is, Michelle, as we've been talking about, everything going on this weekend, beautiful weather. Not much of a concern for severe weather or anything. No, it has been such a calm week for us weather-wise, and we deserve it, of course, after all the rain events we had last week. So, and we are easing that way as we head towards the weekend. It is still Thursday, and we're starting off on a comfortable start. Take a look at the temperatures around the region. 66 there for Bainbridge and 64 Mariana and all across the board there we have some nice comfortable temperatures 61 in Perry as well as down by Apalachicola you're sitting there at 63 degrees a few dense fog advisories have now been issued but that's more for the west portions of our area so if you are traveling out I-10 westbound some patchy fog visibility a little bit on the low side give yourself a few extra minutes you don't have to worry about wet roads though no rain in the forecast for today now heading into the afternoon close to the Swanee River Valley in South Georgia we're looking at a few pop-up showers due to a little bit of a sea breeze acting up there, so expect that. No heavy downpours, but you could come light and scattered across the region. We're looking at a high of 85 degrees this afternoon, and it keeps getting warmer. Summertime temperatures and closing in close to 90 degrees as we head towards the weekend. I'll give you all the details on that hot forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, let's check in with Moose with a look at this morning's traffic. Good morning, Moose. Good morning, Michelle, and good morning, everyone. Bradford Road, Gum Road, Lafayette Street, McClay Boulevard. They are all still under construction, all still with closures and all with detours to get you around without too many problems. And seeing one area down in Perry still with some flooding. We've been talking about this for a couple of days now. Goose Pasture Tram and County Road 681. Florida Highway Patrol has closed off that area to, to water over the roadways. Otherwise, it's a pretty clean commute. No accidents being reported in or around Tallahassee. So we'll keep an eye on that and get you your next update in about 15 minutes. 
This morning, fire marshals trying to figure out what caused the fire to now shut down school in Madison County. These are photos sent in by Patrick Lightcap of the fire at the former primary elementary school in downtown Greenville. Now, members of the Greenville Fire and Rescue was called out of about 8 o'clock last night. They say a two-story building behind the school had smoke coming from it. Now that building is the cafeteria. It wasn't attached to the rest of the school. Firefighters tell us the building hasn't been in use for quite a while. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And remember, when you see news happening, share it with us. You can send in your photos and videos of news. ABC 27 News at WTXL.TV. You can also share it with us on Facebook and Twitter. Tallahassee police hoping you can help them catch a man that tried robbing a local Walmart store. Take a look at these photos here. Police say Sunday night, the man you see in these photos tried to steal a few things from the Walmart on Appalachian Parkway. When confronted, he started fighting with employees and then took off possibly in a dark colored sedan. So if you happen to recognize this guy being urged to call the Big Ben Crime Stoppers 850-574-8477. Tallahassee police also warning you this morning of a new scam. This one involving fake court documents. You may be among those getting an email looking like this one saying that it's a real court document. It's not. The message says you're facing criminal charges and you need to send cash to avoid any more legal problems. Tallahassee PD's Financial Crimes Unit says email is just a scam. Now, if you think you may have gotten this email or any phone scams, you're asked to call your local law enforcement agency to report it. Well, come November, Leon County voters will get to decide how some of the revenue from the 1% sales tax will be spent. Some of the options include having a 12% of the sales tax extension go to economic development or having $14 million from the tax extension go to development at the Tallahassee Regional Airport. Florida state lawmakers say with all the recent news of bear attacks, it may be time to once again allow bear hunting in the state. Florida totally outlawed bear hunting in 1994 after they were put on the threatened species list, but now there are a lot more bears and some of the animals are looking for food in neighborhoods, making it more likely that a human may come face to face with a bear. Halsey Bashir is a Florida representative from our area that supports the proposal, says he's seen firsthand what black bears are capable of doing. I've seen them myself while I've been hunting. I've seen them tear up hunting feeders, uh, and I, they're very real, and they are very much can be dangerous. Now, Bashir says the danger isn't just in Central Florida, but also here in the Big Ben. He says there's a huge increase in the number of bear sightings in Jefferson, Wakulla, and Franklin counties. Now, we did uh, reach out to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission for comment, but they were not available. Well, State Attorney Willie Meggs giving details about dealing with the Jameis Winston sexual assault case this past year. According to our media partners at the Tallahassee Democrat, Meggs says that in his nearly 40 years on the job, he'd never seen such an intense interest in a case and that he received hundreds of letters and emails about the case. And all of a sudden, it was turned over to the State Attorney's Office. We worked pretty hard trying to tie a bunch of loose ends, do some things that hadn't been done, uh, looked at the weaknesses of the case, met with our victim, and uh, and and, uh, and had she had a lawyer. And, you know, lawyers are good things sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> she was very difficult to deal with. The lawyer, she was the aunt of the, the victim in the case, very difficult to deal with. Now, Meg says he was first alerted to the case on November 13th, and his chief assistant attorney read the files to him over the phone as he drove to teach class. 636 this morning, we are featuring a cold case. No new leads, but the search continues for a Tallahassee mother who went missing more than eight years ago. Your hope that you may have the key to help solve it. Most of the country set out on a search or the county rather, set out on a search for Allie Gilmore. She was a Tallahassee woman who was four months pregnant when she went missing on February 3rd of 2006. Her child today would be seven. Gilmore's disappearance was suspicious. She was last seen leaving the Publix near Lake Ella. If you have any information about where Allie Gilmore could be or any leads that could help solve the case, you're asked to call the Big Ben Crime Stoppers 850-574-8477. Well, this was the scene in Plant City, Florida Wednesday morning. Check it out. 
a CSX train hitting a tractor trailer. Ooh, hauling logs as a truck cross the railroad tracks. The train pushing the semi about a thousand feet down the tracks before coming to a stop. Hillsborough County Sheriff officials says the truck driver suffered non-life threatening injuries. The crossing does not have lights or a crossing arm. It does have a railroad crossing sign posted though. Well, a big change in the works for people who use and make electronic cigarettes. The FDA taking a bold move in cracking down on every step of their manufacturing, marketing, and consumption. ABC's Simon Bradley now has more for us this morning from Washington. They've been called a safer alternative to cigarettes, and they're wildly popular. E-cigarettes, those battery-powered devices that give users a nicotine high from a vapor. We think that the harm is less than with a traditional cigarette. Maybe. E-cigarettes don't have tobacco tar found in traditional cigarettes, but it's not clear what's in them. That's because since they burst into the U.S. back in 2006, they've gone unregulated. The federal government wants to change that. Right now, it's like the wild, wild west in terms of what people are doing. The products are evolving with, with you know, no regulatory oversight and being marketed um, in ways that are very worrisome. This morning, the FDA is proposing new regulations for e-cigarettes. Under the new rules, e-cigarette sales would be banned to people under age 18. A warning label would be placed on the devices, and e-cigarette manufacturers would be required to tell the FDA what's in their products. We don't have the answers we need about e-cigarettes and their role in the marketplace and their role in health and disease. Public health officials are especially worried about protecting children. E-cigarette manufacturers use flavors such as bubblegum, pineapple, and vanilla, flavors that could attract kids. The proposal would also place pipe tobacco and cigars under the FDA's authority to regulate. For now, the FDA is not seeking to ban the marketing of e-cigarettes in TV ads or online, but the agency says it reserves the right to issue new proposals down the road. Tamon Bradley, ABC News, Washington. And coming up this evening, just a few hours away from the WTXL Question Center. Joining us tonight, we've got members of the Children's Home Society of North Florida. We do this question center every month to give you the opportunity to ask your questions to experts of various fields. Tonight, the topic is foster care and adoption. The need for foster care homes, how you can become a foster family and how you can adopt. It's taking place live during our evening newscast, 5 until 6.30 p.m. All the details are on our website, WTXL.TV. Join us tonight, starting at 5. Well, still ahead here this morning, talking birthdays. She's known as the first and original American Idol. She's turning 32. We'll tell you who it is, coming up on this Thursday edition of Sunrise. What does it take to be a fixer? Join Jade Valexa tonight at 11 as she examines the world of being Olivia Pope. Watch Scandalous Profile of a Fixer tonight at 11, only on WTXL ABC 27, dedicated to you. Good Morning America plus Spider-Man. Amazing! The cast of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 swings in and takes over Times Square. Can you handle it? Then. The mega deals and steals event of the season. On ABC's Good Morning America this morning. At the Flowers Automotive Group in Thomasville, we're proud to offer our customers one of the best selections of pre-owned vehicles in South Georgia. You'll love the selection of pre-owned vehicles at the Flowers Auto Group in Thomasville. We stock over 100 hand-picked pre-owned vehicles that are fully inspected by factory-trained technicians, certified Nissans, Hondas, and a great selection of models priced under $10,000. The Flowers Automotive Group in Thomasville, where you'll love the experience and love your car. Your security company may claim 24-hour service, but can you look at your smartphone and see what happened just seconds ago? SafeTouch customers can. They can see anything they want from any internet or cellular device because SafeTouch systems are always on. At SafeTouch, all cameras and home automation are integrated into one powerful system. If a crime occurs at my house, it's all right here on my cell phone or on my computer. Emergency authorities love it. Crooks hate it. Don't be fooled by bundled security systems. Get the best. Call SafeTouch today. Heard the car wreck? Pick a law firm with horsepower. Call me, attorney Randy Pelham. Often you're entitled to more money than just car repairs, medical bills, and lost wages. And often I can get you money the insurance company doesn't tell you about. We've got horsepower. We work to get you all your money and keep you out of the courtroom. Why take the insurance company's offer? We work to get you more. Call me, attorney Randy Pelham.
I just love to work fast. The Pelham Law Firm is the way to go. 3836600. 642 celebrating some birthdays here on this Thursday morning. Okay, if this smile doesn't give it away. Since you've been gone. I know, see, I'm singing all morning. Kelly Clarkson, original American Idol, turning 32. We've got a celebrity twofer for you this morning, too. Cedric the Entertainer, turning 50. Liston's favorite comedian, of course, thinks he's hilarious. And Evan Bryant, turning two. Happy birthday from Mom and Dad. We'd love to celebrate your birthday with you. So send in your photo and all the details. WTXL birthday at WTXL.TV. Coming up next.